It's hose and fittings time. We've just raided the shelves at VPW and come back with a bag of goodies. So let's crack out the AN wrenches and get working. When it comes to this subject, I know pretty much nothing, I'll admit that, but I know you know a lot. So I'm just gonna sit back and let you explain what we're about to do. Yeah, cool. I've been using this brand pretty much since its inception. Uh, their range and product mix is really, really awesome. So everything from hose fittings and a whole heap of other stuff, they've got it covered. All right, so we've got a pile of fittings over here. So how about we run through what it is and what they're used for and take a closer look at them. We went shopping at uh, VPW, of course, and uh, come back with a massive list of ProFlow fittings for the car. So um, basically now, we're gonna make all of this and this and this and this and this and this fit in the car. So first step is basically to break it all up into categories and to try and remember what the hell the list was that I went shopping with the start with. So um, this is uh, some lightweight ethanol uh, resistant uh, rubber braided hose. Um, it's it's really normal braid you see is uh, stainless on the outside. This stuff is like a lightweight uh, nylon cloth. Um, it is, it's fantastic. It's a really nice nice finish too. So because it's like the cloth braid, it, it, it won't, if it rubs on a panel, it's not gonna rub the paint off like the stainless braid can. Um, but this is also super light too. So perfect for, perfect for keeping the weight down in the car. Dash 10 will be used for our oil cooler lines as well as our turbo oil drain. This is a black overbraid Teflon in Dash 3. So this will make up the lines for our brake lines as well as our turbo oil feed line. So we don't need massive lines for, for our turbo oil feed because there's a rotor really high oil pressure so it's got a lot of supply and also roller bearing turbo doesn't need a heap of oil as well this is dash six again the nylon lightweight cloth braid and ethanol resistant this will be used primarily for our trans cooler line so trans cooler line will uh, run all the way to the back of the car this is in dash eight so this will actually be a lot of our fuel supply so our uh, feed to the rails and return will be in dash eight clear convoluted pvc tubing that we'll be using for our breather line so this is I believe this is something like um, almost an inch ID, but it's great because it's clear, you, you can see what the engine's doing pretty much. So we'll run this actually um, through the cabin, up through the firewall, through the cabin, up the roll cage, all the way to the back of the car. And now it comes down to the fitting. So um, this is a, a obviously, ProFlow. Uh, y, uh, another take on a y, y adapter. So this is one style of Y adapter. They do have, uh, this is the larger one that has a, a dash 10 inlet to twin dash, dash 8 outlets. Uh, they do a smaller one that's dash 8 to dash 6 and these ones normally line up perfectly if you've got twin 044 setups as well in a car. So if you've got twin 044 pumps, uh, you want to run them out dash 8 to a single dash 10 line, this is this is the piece you need. What, what we'll run here is will be a dash 10 inlet from our fuel uh, system. So we'll have a single supply line that you've seen on our fuel tank that we made. Uh, single dash 10 in and then this will bleed off to um, split off to twin dash eight lines. So one will go to the secondary rail, one will go to the primary rail. Um, so we'll put that with the rest of our, our fuel system stuff. So we have dash eight 180. That'll be one of the returns back to our fuel rig. So again, we'll put that with the fuel system stuff. So this is a ProFlow drain tap. What this does, we'll custom make a catch can and put that in the boot. And when we want to drain, it's as simple as we'll, we'll mount this in the in the bottom, so we'll weld in a, a fitting this will screw into, and when we want to drain off that tank, it's as simple as just opening up this valve, and and then everything that's in the catch can will just drain out here. This will be the system that we use on uh, the turbo oil feed. So we've got our um, dash three fittings here, and this is actually um, a pretty cool little setup. So this this comes as a kit with multiple little size uh, filters inside of it, um, and all we do here is uh, we put this in line. Uh, on its way to the turbo and um, yeah, it's just a little inline extra oil filter for for the turbo system This is their zinc steel dash 390. They also come in. They also make these in stainless So this will be used for brake lines um, If you don't want to run really aluminium fittings when you're doing brake lines, it is uh, al the brake fluid is fairly corrosive. This will actually be the Jatco um, keys three-speed automatic transmission fitting so we'll pop that there you can hear some dash eight aluminium weld on bungs. 
Uh, these will primarily be what we weld on the end of our fuel rails. We've got some fittings here that are dash eight uh, AN to dash eight orb or O-ring. Uh, these will be these two um, will be for the return for the fuel rig. Uh, and this one's a dash eight orb to dash ten. That will be the return line off the fuel rig down the so down, down the bottom. These are dash ten nineties. We'll use these on our oil cooler lines. We have a metric uh, M18 to 1.5 and a metric M16 to 1.5 to dash 10 bungs. These is, this is for the front, the timing cover, oil uh, and the rear plate all for the oil cooler lines as well. So we'll put those there. A couple of dash eight uh, straights. So these are the cutter series of ProFlow um, hose in. So these will be coming out of our, um, our Y piece. We can actually probably screw those on now so we know exactly what fittings go go where. It's pretty handy to as you, as you go, sort of just doing stuff like this. And we'll probably put a dash 10 ProFlow cutter hose end on the feed here. Uh, ProFlow do a lot of different finishes in their, in their fittings and that. So we've gone with the, the, what they call it, the piano black, which is a really deep gloss, gloss black. You can see how deep the gloss black finish in there is. Now two more of the dash 10s um, these 503 uh, dash 10 BKs will be on our surge on it on our fuel cell So one will be the feed and one will be the return. This is a, a t-piece um, A t-piece for our brake lines in in stainless. This is a stainless one It's also got a mounting lug triple nine dash 12 D D for aluminium S for steel double S for stainless steel uh, This one will also make up our engine bay when we make up our our catch can in in the boot um, This one will weld on our filler net uh, and another 503 H10. So this this will be the oil drain and the oil return uh, in for the turbo. So we'll, we'll put that with with the turbo stuff as well. I'll just move it so you can actually see. These dash three Teflon uh, aluminium fittings will be used as airlines. Uh, they'll be used off the wastegate. Oh, we don't have the transmission just yet, and we'll mount the trans cooler. You know, one of the last things. So we'll we can leave that aside. Uh, most of the fuel systems complete, so we can do that. Same with the oil cooler. Same with most of the turbo fittings. We can do that. Uh, we don't have the brake booster or the master cylinder yet, so we can leave this to later, and we'll also leave the catch can a bit later on. So making a list before you go shopping is, is very important, of course, but when you get back from that, laying out everything like this and, and working through what goes where and doing things in stages also leaves, you know, it, it really helps helps out on uh, just getting the job done, basically, because if you leave all the fittings in a box like that, you might not know where to start or it's, you know, it's difficult to find a starting point, but I mean, this makes it much easier. So, I mean, you know, we can pretty much start now going that, Easiest thing to knock over is probably these oil cooler lines and then start working on some of the fuel system, the turbo lines, uh, air lines, and then, you know, in no time, you, you basically you basically finish half the car, the engine bay at least anyway. So uh, we'll get started on some of these lines now. So we'll show you basically what we use to cut the hose, um, how to assemble them, and then fitting them also on the car. All right, so we're going to go over a few methods of how we how we go about uh, assembling hose and things like that. So first thing we need to do is cut the hose. Uh, there's a fair few methods out there to do that. So you can use a, a hacksaw or you know a one mil grinding disc on, a, on an angle grinder cutting disc. Uh, we prefer to use these cutters and the reason for that is it gives a nice clean cut but also there's no residue. So when you're cutting with a, a, a cutting disc on a grinder or you're cutting with a hacksaw, you, you're tearing through the rubber and the stainless braid which means that residue from that cut is gonna go into that hose. So unless you completely remember to clean out all the hoses before you assembly, some of that could be left in your hose and that's gonna find its way into your engine. So it's not great. The, these, these cutters um, are fairly affordable. Um, we do sell these. Um, these are from ProFlow. Um, and yeah, these, these, are, these just make the job so easy. So if you are going to be assembling quite a few hoses, um, this is probably the way to go. These are the large ones. There are also ones that are much smaller that, that'll do most size hoses up to think dash 12 or whatever. So these are, we've got these when we do dash 16, dash 20 type of hoses. So you can get away with the much smaller ones as well. These are specific size AN wrenches, um, again from ProFlow. So they're color coded to the sizes um, that you use. So uh, this one is 10S, which is uh, like a socket nut. So this is the nut that you'll be tightening up when you uh, assemble the hose. And the other one is 10B. So the B nut is the nut that you tighten up when you assemble the fitting in the car to, to the other end of the hose. So um, they're great. They normally come in sizes all the way from dash three to dash 
uh, -16-20. The other option is just uh, one of these shifters. So they're, they're really nice, they contour to your hand. You can also get a short one. So they're very good if you've got to do tight space stuff like uh, the tur turbo oil drain is often one that's very hard to get to. So there is a stubby wrench that you can you can get. Um, this only will do up to about size 20, uh, size 12, sorry. So um, just remember that if you are doing any hoses larger than size 12 that you pretty much have to use these. Because they're aluminium, um, they're soft. So they won't damage the fitting and they also won't mar them or mark them. So if you're using uh, your normal steel shifter or, or, or spanner or something like that, you'll know that they, they can bite into the aluminium and leave a, leave a mark on, on your pretty expensive fittings that you've just spent a lot of time in effort assembling. You need something to hold the fittings together when you are assembling them. So you, you, you're obviously more than likely gonna use a vise. Uh, these are soft aluminium vise jaws. You'll see that they're cut out perfectly the fit fitting. So they're cut in a hex way so when you do put them in a vise and, and clamp them together, um, this this will just hold it basically like like so. Um, and it means that, again, it, it'll hold the fitting exactly where it needs to be held. Uh, it won't mark the fitting mode again, which is another bonus. Um, yeah, so the three things, the cutting, um, the cutting clamps, the vice jaws and and the spanners or shifters are, are something you should really consider if you're going to assemble a few a few hose and fittings. All right, time to assemble them, I guess. All right, so obviously the hose and the fittings uh, exercise that you're undertaking here isn't you know is is one of the more um, expensive things, I guess, uh, in the build. Uh, I mean, all, all parts of build when you're building. Um, you know, racing cars and, and performance stuff, you know, isn't generally uh, cheap. But uh, you know, if you make a mistake here and you have to buy more hose for no reason other than you measured something incorrectly, like the old saying goes, measure twice and cut once. Just start by assembling all the fittings and exactly where they have to go. So um, forget using a tape measure in that in in the early part. First of all, just actually put the fittings on the car. So we get the hose here. That's coiled up a bit. And what I'll do is I'll just simply reach down here and then that's got to go there run the line essentially where I want it to run and then pretty much cut the size so um, that is essentially where I want to cut it so I know that I need to make the cut right here and show you how easy this is um, literally there is just no effort it's just all um, because th these large levers essentially um, are doing all the work, it's just a little bit of effort. I generally like to cut each hose and each fitting at a time. It just, I mean, it just helps not make mistakes on, you know, if you're assembling a, a 90 to a 90, big deal, but if you're assembling a 90 to a straight, obviously, um, and then on the other end of the, they're set up with this all coil line, uh, where there's a 90 and a 90, and then the other end is a 90 and a straight. Uh, if you assemble the wrong hose length to the wrong hose ends, um, you're basically left with two rubbish ends, lengths of hose, and and have to start again. So um, yeah, we'll assemble this one now. All right, so first thing we want to do is put the hose through this end of the socket. So we'll put it in our device jaws. It's simply a case of feeding the hose in. And then just don't normally just use a, an easy twisting motion. You see there that the hose has gone in uh, a fair way. So normally just pushing it far and then you just back it off a little bit. Because this is, obviously this is raw aluminium. And we've got raw aluminium here and we've got raw aluminium here. The, the, the threads have never sort of been used. I like to use just a, a little slight amount of lubricant on there just so um, it's like when you, I mean, anything like the, the Penrite anti that we we'll use on the wheel studs and things like that. It, it just helps it. Uh, fittings not gall and things like that like any any virgin aluminium surface or stainless steel surface and that really should um, Have a slight amount of, of lubricant put on it before before you actually screw things together. I like to um, start this by hand Do as much as I can by hand and then um, Basically start the tightening process so That's it. I mean, that's pretty much how how easy it is. That's um that's one new hose, completely assembled um, and ready to go on the car. With the oil cooler lines out of the way, it's time to turn focus to the fuel system. First step is to screw all the fittings in place so we can rough out if we have the right angles, sizes, and number of fittings. We have a dash ten return, which will come up here. 
we have a Dash 890 here. Now, YP setup, so that will sit, we'll make something that sits off the bottom of this, uh, off the plenum. Got a couple of Dash 8 bungs we need to weld into this radiator, so we'll just sit those there. Got a couple of little air fittings here for our turbo smart pressure regulator. We'll just whack those on. We'll probably end up having a roll of uh, the weld on bungs uh, here, uh, and then we can just run air straight to uh, any of these or through a probably mount our uh, boost controller maybe over here somewhere so you can run the air straight from there and straight back to there so as short as possible and we'll get a closer that later maybe that's a restrictor basically a one millimeter restrictor um, that what that does is it drops in here in the top of the uh, AN fitting and that will basically restrict the exact amount of oil that will get fed to the turbo on, on an engine like like a rotary engine here where we have upwards of 100 psi oil pressure uh, we really need to ensure that we restrict the flow of oil uh, to the turbo too much oil can do um, can do damage and blow past the seal so this is the uh, oil draw uh, oil feed from the front plate so we'll screw that the metric M12 fitting in just here. Okay, we've got our two Dash 1090s, which will comprise the oil drain. Uh, we've already got the flange and the uh, Dash 10 fitting fitted to the bottom of the turbo. With that, I mean, that's that's pretty much the fittings, uh, all these fittings laid out, so we can start really making every single one of these lines here. So uh, I'll probably make this, this feed up to there, and, and then I'll take the plenum off so we can see what we're actually doing. So um, we'll get organized with that now. As the return is uh, a different shape, I'll just leave the return over here with the return fittings one there while I work on uh, the actual feed as they are different sizes and they do have different fittings as we don't want to make a mistake. Okay, so we've got the fuel return and the fuel main fuel feed done. So we'll just assemble these on the, on the car now. It'll pretty much go there and there. Fuel main fuel feed. So we're stepping down in size now to dash uh, eight. Now, what we'll do to make sure that this line is definitely uh, dictates the length of the other lines is we'll make this line up first, uh, and then that'll hold our white piece in, in the right area where we do when we want to make our primary one up. That's most of the hose and fittings done. Uh, we'll leave the brake lines until we've sorted out the master cylinder setup. Yeah, that's right. Now. Um, AN fittings are pretty straightforward. If you use the right tools, you know, it's a very easy job to get done. But you just, if you respect the fittings and even put some lubrication on it when they're new, it'll help stop galling. And first and foremost, always at the end of the job, clean out those lines. With that all out of the way, I'd say our next episode will have to involve some electronics and wiring. <sighs> yep. Cut, strip, crimp, repeat. Cut, strip, crimp, repeat. Look. I don't mind wiring for the most part, but it can be really tedious at times too. The end result looks great, but there's some absolute long hours involved in this too. So I guess the only thing to do is get into it. Okay, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you receive notifications as soon as the next video installment comes out. Give us some feedback, write in the comments and let us know what you think. It's hose and fittings time. We've just raided the shelves at VPW and come up with a bag of... Uh, a bag of... Yeah.